Hey guys, it's Mark from Ace Tutors, and in this video, I'm going to use a couple examples to explain a simple four-step process for finding the limiting reactant of a chemical reaction. So first of all, let's go over what is meant by the limiting reactant. The limiting reactant is the reactant that limits a reaction. Wow, I know, big surprise. But in other words, it's basically the thing that we run out of first during a reaction that prevents any more of the products from being made. Okay, that's great, but how do we find which one our limiting reactant is? Well, to do that, let's look at an example. Let's say we have 6 moles of hydrogen, H2, and 3 moles of nitrogen, N2. What is our limiting reactant when forming ammonia, NH3? So, the first thing you'll want to do with problems like this is always write down your balanced chemical equation. So, for this problem, we have H2 and N2 as our reactants and NH3 as our product. On the left, we can see that there are two hydrogens, and on the right, there are three. To balance this, we could put a three next to the diatomic hydrogen and two next to the ammonia, so that we have six hydrogens on both sides. If we do that, we then see that we have two nitrogens on each side, so we're all set. Next, we want to find the moles of each reactant. So for this example, this step is really easy. They already gave us that. We have 6 moles of hydrogen and 3 moles of nitrogen. Then, we want to calculate how much of the product we can theoretically make for each of the reactants. For hydrogen, we know that we are starting with 6 moles. And for this reaction, we just figured out by balancing our equation that in order to make 2 ammonias, we need 3 diatomic hydrogens. Multiplying across, we find that if we were to completely use up all 6 moles of the hydrogen, we could theoretically make 4 moles of ammonia. Now let's do the same process for nitrogen. We know that we are starting with 3 moles of nitrogen, and for this equation, we just found that to make 2 ammonias, we only need 1 diatomic nitrogen. Multiplying across, we once again have our moles of nitrogen cancel out, and we find that if we were to completely use all 3 moles of nitrogen, we could make 6 moles of ammonia. Finally, we want to compare our theoretical yields for each reactant. With the amount of hydrogen that we have, we found that we could only theoretically make 4 moles of ammonia. And with the amount of nitrogen that we have, we found that we could theoretically make 6 moles of ammonia. So as a result, hydrogen is our limiting reactant, because that's what we'll run out of first and cause our reaction to stop. Okay, awesome. Now let's solidify this concept with a little more challenging example. But first, if you're finding this video useful so far, please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons to support us making more of these videos. Okay, this time, let's say we want to figure out which reactant limits the formation of copper phosphate when you mix 0.1 liters of 0.5 molar copper 2 chloride, CuCl2, with 0.1 liters of 0.25 molar sodium phosphate, Na3PO4. Now I know that was a mouthful, so first let's once again write out our equation. We know that we have CuCl2 mixing with Na3PO4 to create Cu3PO4 2 but we also have one more product. Just like the copper went with the phosphate on the product side, the Na will go with the Cl giving us our other product of NaCl. Now it's time to balance. First, let's look at the coppers. On the left, we have one copper, and on the right, we have three. So let's put a three out in front of the CuCl2. This means we have six chlorines on the left and only one on the right. So let's put a six out in front of the NaCl. Now we have six sodiums on the right, but only three on the left. So let's put a two out in front of the Na3PO4. The last thing to check is the phosphates. On the left, we have two, and on the right, we have two. So we're all set. Next. We have to find out how many moles we have of each reactant. For the CuCl2, we have 0.1 liters of 0.5 molar solution. Molarity has units of moles per liter, so we can multiply these two numbers to get that we have 0.05 moles of CuCl2. Then for sodium phosphate, we have 0.1 liters of 0.25 molar solution. So as a result, we only have 0.025 moles of Na3PO4. Now that we have our moles of reactants, we can find the theoretical yield of the products, in particular the copper phosphate. 
Dealing with CuCl2 first, in balancing our equation, we found that in order to make one mole of copper phosphate, we need three moles of CuCl2. This implies that we could theoretically make 0.0167 moles of copper phosphate. For sodium phosphate, from our balanced equation, we found that in order to make one mole of copper phosphate, we need two moles of sodium phosphate. If we have 0.025 moles of sodium phosphate, that means we could theoretically make 0.0125 moles of copper phosphate. Comparing these two yields, we find that our limiting reactant is sodium phosphate. With the amounts we have of each reactant, sodium phosphate is going to cause the reaction to stop first, and we're only going to be able to create 0.0125 moles of copper phosphate. So to recap, to figure out your limiting reactant, first write out and balance your chemical equation. Then calculate how many moles of each reactant you have. Then figure out how many moles of your products you could theoretically make with each reactant. And finally, compare those values. The one with the lowest theoretical yield will be your limiting reactant. Now I hope you found this video helpful. Whether you did or didn't, we'd love to hear down in the comments what you thought we did well or what we could have done better. Thanks again for watching, and remember, you have big dreams. Don't let a class get in the way.